And when you come out here, it looks hard. I haven't had it. It's a real pain. But I figure. Yeah, they got one of those uh, uh, wood frames. It's about that big, and it's a couple. Of, uh, you can pick three to four beads to put on your headset, and if you put it in the the light, the um, UV um, light strips will turn it different colors. These are big bar magnets uh, of about ten thousand gauss. Now, it turns out, if you decide to crank up your magnetic field, and I thought I'd put this in here for a bit of fun, uh, if you crank up the magnetic field a little bit further, you can do some funny things. You'll see the red ball. Okay, right. They're right yeah. around the edge, just barely sticking up from the edge. A couple of whiskers. Kind well. of loop-like things. Magdalena Star City is New Mexico true! Ah, now do it all together. <laughs> do give a wider field of view and generally nicer. Right at the top of the ridge, yeah? Uh, yeah, I see, you see the ridge is down. Top and you go down a little bit to This is basically where the whole array is operated from. You see here the operators, this is Larry Brothers, one of our operators here. Tiny little satellite dish antennas scattered around. There's about four of them around here somewhere. That's an atmospheric phase interferometer. We actually do, they are looking at a beacon on a commercial communication satellite and continuously correlating it to get a judgment of the condition of the atmosphere. These dishes are they're 25 meters in diameter, weigh about 230 tons in their current configuration. On the day of the eclipse, large crowds gathered at the Exploratorium's state-of-the-art webcast studio and at museums and planetariums around the country. Put a pinhole of light back there. Let the light go up through the telescope. Then it turns into a, a, a big um, searchlight beam maker. It's an optical call maker. Here in the middle of the room, have some things on display. In the back of the room, have the, the, a library area. And in the side rooms, have like a machine shop over there and an electronic shop uh, in a side room. It's still real cluttered. We've got boarded up windows and stuff over there. The Navajo stories and most of the Hopi stories, most of the Native American stories, are very serious. Mm -hmm. This one's not. It seems that a long, long time ago, when the animals could talk to each other, they were living out here in the desert. And the rabbits and the squirrels could talk to each other, and they and there was a there was a fellow there called the coyote. Why don't you use the chainsaw? Huh? 
it's nice to uh, expose it like this and and uh, see that there's not some great big crack in it. You want to keep going? Might as well. Hasn't moved yet. A lot has changed since that night in April 2014 when 40 people braved cold and uncertain weather to attend our first star party beneath Magdalena's dark skies. It was a one evening, no frills affair, complete with three telescopes. Since then, we've hosted hundreds of stargazers at the new Cibola Forest location, Star Village, with lower horizons and lots of room for camping and activities, including a secluded area for astrophotography. In October 2016, we're offering special tours of the Magdalena Ridge Observatory and the Very Large Array. In Magdalena, there will be a program of lectures and sharing opportunities at Bear Mountain Lodge, open house at the Astronomical Lyceum, an astronomical exhibit at the CWB Gallery, plus activities in Magdalena's public library and solar telescopes on the sidewalks. There will be good food aplenty, arts, crafts, antiques, and more. So, come play with us. If you can't wait till October, drop by anytime. There's plenty to see and do 